This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good Saturday morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us to start your weekend. I'm Brittany Falters. Topping headlines this morning, game day is here. How Ducks and Beavers fans are getting ready for the Civil War. That includes one guy who played in three of the big games. Plus, Portland agencies are on alert with the potential for snow this weekend, how PBOT plans to respond, and how groups are working to get people out of the cold. So let's send it right over to Vanessa Paz for a check on that forecast. It is really chilly to start the day. It indeed is. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Welcome to your last day of November. Can you believe we are already at that time of year? But uh, first, I want to let folks know that we are not seeing any rain on our satellite and radar composite. Things are going to change, though, over the next 48 hours. What we're seeing as we zoom out here is a system building from the southwest. It's going to move its way north into our region, and with that, we're going to see increasing cloud coverage and precipitation associated with that. But first, let's focus on those temperatures because as Brittany mentioned, it is cold out there. If you are headed out the door uh, anytime soon, make sure to bundle up. And of course, also with uh, these cold temperatures uh, on the way as well, you want to make sure to uh, wrap up those faucets outdoors and bring those indoor plants in and of course bring those pets in as well. We do have snow, though, that we're talking about in those higher elevations and then icy conditions out in the gorge. I will explain all of that later on in my full forecast that's ahead later on, Brittany. All right, thanks so much, Vanessa. And that mere mention of snow and ice puts a lot of Portland agencies on edge from people who maintain our roads to those who run homeless shelters. Maggie Vespa checks in with them ahead of tonight's possible storm. We'll start with the emergency shelters because they're open tonight and people need them. It's freezing cold. It's Freezing cold. The city and county have offered up 300 extra beds for Portland's homeless. Last night, only 100 of them were used. This woman told us why she slept outside. They're pretty much filled up, I think, now. Well, they've opened up a bunch of emergency spots, so they actually had 200 open last night. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Officials and nonprofits struggle every year to spread the word about severe weather shelter beds. They implore Portlanders to call 211 if they need a bed or a ride to a shelter. There was a significant amount of fire coming from underneath the bridge. Today, firefighters saw what can happen when people struggling in the cold get desperate. They say a homeless camp caught fire under the North Vancouver overpass near Columbia Boulevard. It was coming out from both sides of the bridge, heavy black smoke, and the entire underside was, was on fire with all the debris under there. Six people lived here. Their stuff is torched. But thankfully, they're all okay. Adding to the list of cold weather concerns, local roads and Portland's history of struggling to maintain them amid past snowstorms. This weekend's forecast has the Bureau of Transportation on high alert. We've been paying close attention. We will continue to pay close attention. Peabot's plows, salt trucks and other equipment are ready. Today, their yard was packed and their advice should snow fall was clear. If you don't need to travel to please stay home. If you can't do that, officials recommend taking public transit, adding. Please go out there and shovel those sidewalks to make it easier for people, no matter what type of mobility they have, whether they're walking in a wheelchair, using other mobility devices, that makes it a lot easier for folks to get to the bus stop and take the bus safely to where they need to go. By the way, salt is definitely part of Peabot's plan. If and when snow or ice actually starts falling, it'll be applied along designated routes. Peabot has already started laying liquid de-icer down. Crews spent the night treating patients from a devastating accident in Marion County. It killed three people and injured 10 others. This happened just east of Salem near Cordon Road and Sunnyview Road Northeast. Police say a full-sized passenger van collided with a pickup truck. 13 people were in the van. Three of them were found dead at the scene. Detectives spent the night working to reconstruct the crash and figure out what went wrong. We're following a developing story out of Central Oregon. A Deschutes County Sheriff's deputy shot a man near a shopping center in Bend. That man was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. We still don't know what led up to the shooting at the Cascade Village Shopping Center. Investigators spent the night at the scene. The deputy has been placed on administrative leave. 
Pop up picnics showed up in parks all over Portland yesterday, part of several protests. Community groups are upset about a new city ordinance that would require them to get permits to serve people who need a meal. They've been serving an evening meal in Director's Park since 2013. Yesterday, it was an afternoon meal of soup and sandwiches. A short distance away in the North Park blocks, another pop-up picnic. The city plans to require permits to serve meals, and there would be a limit of just one permit a week at any park. Community groups filed a lawsuit to try to block the new rules. People who take advantage of the meals say they're needed. A lot of people, like I said, depend on it. You know? It's just that even though it's just that little bit of food or a little coffee, some soup, it, it, it helps. You know? The city says the new ordinance is supposed to help establish a process to support these services and events. In-N-Out Burger is expected to open its new Kaiser location in the next few weeks. We know traffic is going to be crazy, and that's why Kaiser City leaders are coming up with a plan. According to the Statesman Journal, Volcano Stadium parking lot could handle overflow parking. The ideal plan would have flaggers guide drivers from Volcano Stadium to the drive through lane. In and out needs to reach an agreement with volcanoes and the Target store nearby. The City Council will review the plan on Monday. All right, who are you rooting for in the Civil War this weekend? The 123rd meeting between the Ducks and Beavers happens this afternoon, and fans are gearing up for the big game. There's a lot at stake for both teams this year. Devin Haskins previews the upcoming Civil War with fans and a quarterback who's played in three of them. On a rainy day outside the Beaver store, it's looking a little gloomy, but inside it's a little brighter. Fans say it is time. It's always time. Time for the Beavers to pull off an upset. And we want to definitely see the Ducks lose. The Beavers haven't won the Civil War since 2016 and sorry to bring it up, but they've lost 10 of the last 11. Of course I want a Beaver win um, with Oregon losing last week to Arizona. I think we actually have a shot this year. The Ducks are ranked in the odds on favorite to win. I think the Ducks are going to roll them. They're getting ready for uh, for the Rose Bowl. He's got tickets to the game and there are still hundreds available through sites like Ticketmaster. So if you do go, it is beyond insane. It's exciting. It's um, it's a world of its own. That's from the stands, but down on the field, Take it from someone who's been there. And there was a lot riding on it. So it was it was more than just local bragging rights. The, the Civil War for, for a decade had some pretty significant national implications to it. Former Oregon Ducks quarterback Joey Harrington played in three of the games. Uh, ironically, in three games against the Beavers, I never threw a touchdown pass. Not exactly his best performances, but his team did win two of them. And I wasn't going to go there, but... Throws over the middle and it's incomplete! We can go straight to Joey Five picks if you want. So here's the deal. He's talking about the infamous 2000 Civil War game where he was picked off five times and lost to eighth ranked Oregon State. So enough about the past. Let's focus on the future. Who's going to win on Saturday? I would say 35 21. 38 13. Well, I'm hoping that we will win by at least 20 points. I almost hesitate to to make a prediction in a rivalry game like this because you truly never know how it's going to play out. Maybe it'll be a little brighter for the Beavers or will the Ducks rain on their parade? Kickoffs at 1 p.m. Devin Haskins, KGW News. Thanks, Devin. It's always fun talking about this game and we want you to weigh in this morning. You see it right there on the bottom of your screen. We want to know who you're rooting for. Is it the Ducks, the Beavers, or are you taking the Marge Simpson approach and just rooting for both teams to just have a good time? Log on to KGW.com slash vote or head to our mobile app to weigh in. Well, the Blazers fought hard at the Moda Center last night in their second matchup of the week with the Chicago Bulls. Hassan Whiteside made franchise history with 10 blocks for Portland. Blazers win it 107 to 103. Damian Lillard led the way with 28 points. Carmelo was close behind at 23. Blazers head to L.A. on Tuesday. It's been a month since online sports betting started here in Oregon. Some gamblers are winning big. The usual wager, that unusual wager, that turned one man's $5 bill, bet, excuse me, into 81,000 bucks.